Well, hello there, and welcome to Hump Day on the Fun Astrology Podcast, Wednesday, March the 6th. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Glad you're here. We're going to get back to talking about the chart today. We've been talking about this big structural formation of everything tightening down within 108 degrees of each other, from Pluto on one end to Uranus on the other. Well, let's talk about what that's doing to some of the aspects in the chart. And there are basically two kinds of aspects, except for the moon and the vertex point and the south node of the moon. We have nothing but sextiles and squares. And I know you say, well, wait a minute. We do have a trine today between the moon and Uranus. Yes, that is true. It actually has passed already. But that's what I say is, except for the moon, we have nothing but sextiles and squares because everything's within 108 degrees. A sextile is 60, a square is 90, a trine is, whoops, 120. We don't go that far. So all of this energy is producing these sextiles, and we have one today. In fact, we have two today. The first one is when the moon goes void of course, and that's at 2.35 this afternoon Eastern. It sextiles Neptune. These last aspect before the void, of course, are going to get pretty repetitious going forward until we get out of this. But we can play with them squares to sextiles to squares to sextiles. So we have a sextile today to Neptune. If you would like a little bit of spiritual blessing on whatever it is that you're going to be doing today. But the other one that I wanted to mention was Mars sextiling Chiron. That's the next one in sequence. It happens at 6 p.m. this evening Eastern. And I, as I was thinking about this, I thought, wow. So yesterday I mentioned with the bundle and that concentrated me, 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 my, my, my energy and how I encountered that right there in my own family in Dallas. And now we have this sextile between the planet of aggression or at least the planet of conflict and Chiron, which is our wounds that have not healed in this lifetime. Mine got triggered and I decided not to go into conflict, so I just slipped out the back door. And I mean, it was exactly the Chiron wound, triggered by external events, probably not even intentionally, but understanding that this is going to be very concentrated, focused energy. I just kind of played with it and was like, you know what, I could just do better heading on down the road. Now, there might be other ways that you have to deal with this if it comes up, and leaving may not be an option. But the question is, would you be able to tone it down a little bit, or at least count to five? Put a little bit of distance between you and the trigger if you can. And like I say, that may be geographic, it may be physical distance, or it might just be, let me get back to you on that, give me just a day or two. What I did is I had a, about a six-hour drive to get from Dallas to Amarillo. There in Amarillo, I got back on Interstate 40, pointed the nose cone of Lord Jupiter West, and decided that I was going to sulk and process and grieve and mourn and pity and everything else until I got to Amarillo. Six hours. But once I got to Amarillo, I was going to put the whole thing behind me in the rearview mirror, I was going to leave it behind. Yes, it involves some wounds, and I'm going to point my direction and compass toward the future. As much as I allowed myself to be in the shadow side of the experience, I determined that the shadow, once I got on I-40, was gone. Move it forward. It's over. Set your sights on a new direction. And what that did is it contained the conflict just to myself. In other words, it didn't spill out. And that was also very important. Now, the next sequential thing that happens today is the moon enters Aquarius from that void, of course, and that happens at 7.38 this evening Eastern. So for tomorrow, Thursday, and into Friday, basically all of Friday, we're going to have, see, there's that, again, independent spirited moon. So we're going to be processing this as those planets continue to squeeze together. No direct aspects all day tomorrow, and then on Friday we have Mercury conjoining Neptune in Pisces. That one could have a little tinge of challenge to it, because obviously Mercury is in the opposite sign that it rules, a Virgo. There in Pisces it is in fall, so we could have a little bit of challenge as it crosses over Neptune, who is holding down the fort in its own sign. 
We'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow. And I thought what we might do tomorrow is just do a bit of a trip update and overview because we don't have any direct aspects. So we can talk about some of the reflections of what's been happening so far on this cross-country jaunt from North Carolina to California. All right. Happy hump day. Have a good one. And set your sights forward. Sail to the direction of your highest timeline. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you back tomorrow. Sending all kinds of mwah.